I know you're sick of hearing about LDL cholesterol, but a new analysis finds that high LDL cholesterol is not associated with the degree of coronary artery calcification. This is a really interesting analysis by Dave Felbin, uh, Nick Norwitz, uh, and Matthew Budoff. I'll put it, all the images on the screen here. I really want to go slow with this and break this down. Uh, I'm sure Dave and Nick and other people have talked about this study uh, at length, but this is a really interesting analysis because we have a cohort of 80 individuals, one from the keto, I think it's called the keto trial. There's 80 individuals who had been doing a low carb diet for a minimum or median length of 4.7 years who have an LDL cholesterol level greater than 190 milligrams per deciliter, which is on the higher side. Most doctors would pretty much freak out, you know, and, and make sure that you leave their office with a statin. And this analysis looked at using uh, coronary CCTA. This is a CT scan of the coronary arteries to look at the coronary artery calcification, which approximate the degree or severity of atherosclerosis or the plaque buildup in the coronary arteries. And they looked at uh, coronary artery CT scans from individuals in the Miami heart cohort. And I'll share with you the baseline characteristics shortly, but essentially what they wanted to see is if there was an independent association with high LDL cholesterol and the degree to coronary artery atherosclerosis and coronary artery calcification. And newsflash, there was no significant association. There was no independent association or correlation with the degree of LDL cholesterol and the degree of coronary artery calcification in metabolically healthy people. I want to just emphasize that right out of the gate because in some people who are insulin resistant and type 2 diabetic, you know, we know that the metabolic milieu would exacerbate or worsen the propensity of that LDL to initiate the process of coronary artery atherosclerosis and lead to plaque buildup and possibly a major adverse cardiovascular event over time. But in this cohort or subset of metabolically healthy people, because their triglycerides were low, their HDL cholesterol was over 60 milligrams per deciliter, uh, these individuals, uh, and, and again, the cut point for the sort of lean mass hyperresponder uh, phenotype is an LDL cholesterol greater than 190 milligrams per deciliter, an HDL greater than 60 milligrams per deciliter, and triglycerides less than 80 milligrams per deciliter. And so, you know, we're comparing head to head uh, here. Uh, in the study, if I haven't yet mentioned it, is titled Carbohydrate Restriction Induced Elevations in LDL Cholesterol and Atherosclerosis. This was published in the journal Cardiometabolic. Uh, there's the screenshot there. Uh, here is the graphical abstract, and we're gonna dive into the weeds on this. There's a few images that you have to see, but here's a graphical abstract. As you can see here, we are matching 80 individuals from the Miami Heart Study that generally don't have high LDL cholesterol. I think the median LDL was somewhere around 120 or 130 milligrams per deciliter, not considered on the high side. Uh, but uh, in the keto group, uh, 80 individuals, and they were, were comparing apples to apples, right? Because uh, I think there was one former smoker in each group. They were age matched, you know, hypertension, no previous diagnosis, or you know, that was matched and, and diabetes status was matched. And so we're really comparing apples to apples, which, which I like. And so this study was really, I think this analysis was well done. And you can see that there are significantly higher levels. Uh, uh, the LDL cholesterol, that is, is significantly higher in the keto cohort compared to the, to the Miami heart cohort, but the plaque score was not significantly different. In fact, the Miami heart cohort had higher levels of plaques. So we're going to dive into that. But first, friends, thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying this video. Hit that like button if you are. And since we're talking about metabolic health, I just want to remind you about an amazing tool to support your metabolic health in 2025 and beyond. And that's Burberry. As you've heard me say before, this has been used for 3000 years. It's one of the only natural products that you can actually feel when it comes to metabolic health. You know, sometimes we take supplements, we don't really know what they're doing. You take magnesium, you're like, I hope it's doing something. With berberine, you can actually feel this. You can test this with blood ketones or blood glucose. This product actually works. That's why there's over three, close to 350 reviews over at myoscience.com on the novel berberine fasting accelerator using really high quality raw materials paired with pairing berberine with alpha lipoic acid and biotin. Uh, the best way to use this is to take it before your last meal, about 20 to 30 minutes before three capsules, and it can help curb food craving so that after you eat, you're done. You can start your fast. You don't need to, you know, mindlessly chew on uh, snacks or hit the freezer for ice cream or things like that. You can start your fast and have a better night's sleep. And you can also take it in the morning on an empty stomach. So I would encourage you to check out what other people are saying over at myoscience.com on the novel Berberine Fasting Accelerator. I'll put that link 
in the description below and you can save with the code podcast at checkout. Okay. So let's dive into the baseline characteristics. I just want you to recognize this. And anytime you see a study, this is really important. And uh, just for continuing education for many of you, you know that when uh, you know epidemiological research comes out from Harvard and Stanford and they say, oh, the plant-based diet is linked with lower prevalence of diabetes and all that, we always look at the baseline characteristics of the study participants, you know, because then we can see if there's a healthy user bias or there's any other uh, confounding factors that might influence whether or not one cohort that, that is supposedly similar or different from another one, you know, we can see if there's uh, elements of their lifestyle that confound uh, the, the, the study results. And in this case, there's, there's the confounding variables like blood pressure, like age, hypertension status, past smoking status are, are equivalent, right? So there's two past smokers in each group, hemoglobin A1C and, and uh, blood glucose and so forth. No significant differences between groups. But what is significant here is the lipid markers, right? We have and this is what, what I want to focus on. What makes this group different, these two groups different, is the lipid markers. Uh, you look here at LDL cholesterol in the keto group. And again, there's 80 people in each one, uh, each cohort. The LDL cholesterol in the keto group is 272 milligrams per deciliter. The LDL cholesterol in the uh, Miami Heart is just 123 milligrams per deciliter. The HDL, in contrast, is almost 50% higher in the keto group. It's 90 milligrams per deciliter versus just 63 milligrams per deciliter in the Miami Heart cohort. And the triglycerides are, you know, the same. They're about 45% lower in the keto group. The average triglyceride level here, the median uh, was 64 milligrams per deciliter, and it's 96 in the Miami Heart cohort. Okay, so I think that's really important. I, it is interesting to note that the body mass index is quite lower in the keto group, 22.5 the BMI is versus uh, 25.8 in the Miami Heart age and so forth. But no differences here. Okay, so let's look at the coronary artery calcium score from the uh, CT scan. You can see here looking at there's no correlation, right? LDL is all over the place and it doesn't strongly correlate with the degree of coronary artery calcification. So I think that's important. So the median coronary artery calcium score was zero for the keto subjects and was one for the mammy heart subjects. Okay, not that big of a deal, but just, you know, there is a, it was actually higher uh, in the Miami Heart subjects. And remember, their LDL cholesterol was about 50% lower. Uh, so why is that? They say in the subset of the keto subjects, meeting all three stricter lean mass hyperresponder criteria, the median coronary artery calcium score was zero for keto subjects and zero uh, for matched Miami Heart subjects. So I think that's uh, very interesting. Now, when we look at figure one here, this is the plaque scores stratified for LDL cholesterol levels. Um, in the keto, uh, you see that you see LDL cholesterol, you know, as we mentioned, it was about the median was like 190 milligrams per deciliter, but some people had LDL cholesterol in the keto group going up to 600. That's insane. But again, you didn't see major outliers in the coronary artery calcium score. And when they looked at the, what's called the stenosis score. So stenosis is a way to, it's a medical jargon term for the degree of narrowing or occlusion in the coronary arteries. Uh, there was no significant difference in the stenosis store, score. Uh, when you compare the, the different groups, and there were no significant differences in the coronary artery calcium scores when you compare the different groups. So what does this mean? I mean, I think it's quite interesting. You know, there's a lot of competing theories. I'm going to share with you the, the conclusions momentarily. A, a lot of competing theories, though, when it comes to LDL cholesterol. And, you know, the mainstream medical community has this idea known as the continuous exposure hypothesis. And that is, it goes like this. The, the longer that you're exposed to high levels of LDL cholesterol, the more likely that you will develop coronary artery plaque and that will lead to stenosis and occlusion and increase your risk of having a major adverse cardiovascular event. Um, so that's, that's one theory. It's not necessarily proven. It's you know, talked about in a lot of the narrative reviews. Uh, the other theory uh, from the you know, so-called lean mass hyperresponder camp, Nick Norwitz, Dave Feldman, and, and others, is that, hey, in metabolically healthy people, if the LDL is high, but it's matched by a high HDL and a low triglycerides, i.e. there are 
uh, there's reason to believe there's high ketone uh, utilization and fatty acid uh, mobilization in the body, a greater reliance on fat oxidation, therefore probably lower levels of oxidative stress and so so on, that the LDL is not you know being modified or oxidized and contributing to the coronary artery calcification process. And so they say, in conclusion, coronary plaque in metabolically healthy individuals with carbohydrate restriction induced LDL cholesterol levels greater than 190 milligrams per deciliter on a keto diet for a mean of 4.7 years is not greater than a matched cohort with 149 milligrams per deciliter lower average LDL cholesterol. There is no association between LDL cholesterol and plaque burden in either cohort. That's a conclusion. So what do we make of this? Like, what do we do? What, you know, and this may take another decade or maybe two decades for the medical community to actually adopt this is, you know, if your LDL is high, but your HDL is also high, greater than at least 60 milligrams per deciliter, and your triglycerides are low, and you don't have signs, overt signs of insulin resistance or metabolic dysfunction, should we really be worrying about the high LDL cholesterol? Uh, it seems that the answer is probably not. So, I can't give you medical advice. I just think that you should work with a doctor who's a little bit more open-minded and does some advanced lipoprotein particle testing, metabolic health testing, so that you can more confidently continue to eat in such a way that helps you stay lean, energetic, metabolically fit, uh, and feeling good mentally, you know? And if in doing so, your LDL creeps up a little bit, you know, is it that big of a deal? Should we really worry about it? In my opinion, probably not. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, my friends. I appreciate you watching all the way through. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.